Good afternoon, everybody. Um, boy, a lot of emotions, a lot of things going through my mind um, with regard to the last, you know, really six, seven months leading up to us playing a game. And um, I'll get to the game in a moment, but a uh, couple, couple things. I really want to uh, thank Matt Thomason, uh, our athletic training staff, Dr. Goral, um, Gene Taylor administration for allowing the players the opportunity to play. Um, that's the first thing I, that we were blessed. One of the few schools in the country that's getting an opportunity to play. Uh, and, and that was a, a really neat thing. And I, and I, I'm happy that we were able to play. I want to thank all the fans for coming out, um, and coming to a football game under, you know, kind of some strange circumstances with COVID that, uh, uh, loved the fans that came out. They were loud. They were they were into it. Uh, I, it was a home game. It was it was fun to see. And I know uh, that not we couldn't fill it up, but uh, it was fun to see everybody. And I, I can't thank and appreciate those people enough. From the football game, didn't go the way we wanted it to go. Uh, a lot of things played into that. Uh, you can say COVID played into that. It sure did. You can say. Lack of spring ball played into that. It sure did. Lack of summer training. It sure did. Um, losing time in, in fall camp, losing players, all that stuff. It did. But the bottom line is you have an opportunity to compete. You have an opportunity that you don't know how many opportunities we're going to have this year. And we talked about that. Are we going to play nine more? Are we going to play two more? None of us know this. So when you have the opportunity to compete, you have to take advantage of your of your opportunity and your moment. And uh, I thought Arkansas State, you can tell they played a game. They were much better prepared than we were since they'd played a game, and uh, they outplayed us. Um, and uh, our guys have to learn from that. Our guys have to learn that uh, uh, if the first guy goes down, second guy goes down, third guy goes down, it doesn't matter. You're wearing K-State, and you have to make plays. And uh, – uh, we didn't make enough plays. Y young guys that played to older guys that have played to new guys that haven't played. And so we've had uh, a lot of conversations uh, amongst our staff, a lot of conversations with the team. We didn't practice yesterday. We met uh, an awful long time with players, uh, leadership council to um, team meetings, to unit meetings, to position meetings, um, and, and uh, really you know, had some tough conversations. Um, and uh, I, I believe moving forward, there's going to be some positive things coming out of those conversations, um, mainly because we don't know what 2020, none of us do, and none of us have a crystal ball to see what's going to happen in the rest of the fall of 2020. But uh, um, we need to be better, bottom line. So we'll open up for questions. Scott Fritchin. Yeah, hey, Chris. Um, among all the games on Saturday, uh, Briley Moore tied for the most receptions by a tight end in the in the nation. Um, just what impressed you the most about Briley in his first performance? Maybe how has he already answered the call? I knew Briley was going to play well. Uh, he'd uh, had a really good camp, and he's probably one of the hungriest guys we have on the football team. He has a chip on his shoulder because nobody thought he was good enough to play in the, in, in the big 12 or at any power five. Um, he's come in and gained instant respect from our older guys that have played a lot of football to say, boy, this kid's a really good player. But more than that, he handles his business. He, he practices hard. He competes. He holds people accountable. He does all the right things. And I think we can get more out of Briley Moore. And that's what I'm going to challenge Briley to is that he needs to be more for us, um, us moving forward. But uh, so impressed with uh, um, how he just came right in and, and made plays. And, and uh, I know that uh, he's going to have a terrific season. And just it struck me, you had Deuce Vaughn, you had Will Howard. I think it counted a total of five true freshmen that saw action in the season opener. And this comes after – last year's season opener when you had three true fr freshmen play. Um, just how would you assess this true freshman class right now, even the ones we didn't see on Saturday? And could you see an uptick in true freshman production during this season, unlike any other? 
Yeah, that's a that's a great qu uh, question. Uh, very pleased with the athleticism and the knowledge of the freshman class. We're a long ways to go in our maturity level with the freshman mm -hmm. class. Not that that um, they can't get there to have more guys help us. Um, Will Howard's a really really mature kid. Deuce Vaughn's a really mature kid. T.J. Smith played a little bit for us uh, on Saturday. Very mature. I can't think of all the freshmen that played, but uh, um, to play the game at the Power Five level, you have to have great maturity and great discipline, and that's difficult for an 18-year-old. The two guys that you did mention in, in, in Will uh, and Deuce have that, and that's why they were able to step up and look like they belong is they have great maturity and discipline. And so we're going to continue to – practice all these guys young and old because once again going back to my opening statement you just don't know when your moment will be and you have to take advantage of the opportunities you have thanks thanks so much yeah Kellis. hey chris uh noah johnson and jerome mcpherson were two guys who started saturday's game but weren't able to finish it what would you say their outlook is moving forward uh they won't neither one will practice this week uh, it's not season ending for either one, um, but it'll be a week to week basis. Both guys had had terrific fall camps, both guys that uh, um, we were all counting on. And unfortunately, both guys got, did get injured early on and um, which a lot of other people to have the opportunity, but uh, uh, we're a better team with Noah on the field and we're a better team with Jerron on the field. And I was curious, when you went back and got to, you know, rewatch things and take it all in, how would you rate the way Skyler played, putting up some pretty good numbers, but also barely missing on some of those throws? Yeah, he needs to play better. He knows that. Uh, he made some really, really good throws, um, made some really good reads. Uh, um, he was banged up. I think everybody saw that in the second half. Um, but Skyler will respond. And, and – uh, Everybody needs to play better. It doesn't matter if you're an old lineman to the quarterback, to the safeties, to um, linebackers, D-line. Everybody does. And, and so um, we all need to improve. Derek? Yeah, Coach, uh, it was said that Tyler Burns would get maybe be one of the backs to get a lion's share of the carries, and it didn't really turn out that way. Was there anything that happened that prevented that from being the case? Nothing in particular. I think it was more Coach Mess and Coach Anderson and how the game w was being played out. Um, and then in the second half, we weren't playing with a lead. So we had to probably rely on throwing the football a little bit more than what we wanted to. We weren't having great success rushing the football, especially inside. So we thought that Deuce, and I think everybody saw that, is a really effective running back on the perimeter. And uh, we thought he gave us a better chance on the perimeter um, with all the backs that we had. And so um, nothing that uh, anybody did. It's just kind of how the game played out. And with your safeties, you're kind of dealing with some injuries, not with just Jerome McPherson, but Wayne Jones as well. Is there any others that you're going to really try to ramp up and get ready for the conference play? Well, another guy that we were counting on that wasn't available was Ross Elder. Ross has had a terrific camp and has played some football for us. So we hope to get him back in the near future uh, as well. Um, we, we have to continue to improve at, at, at safety, you know, both the free and the strong. We have to continue to build depth so that uh, um, we have more guys that, that can play 20 snaps, 30 snaps, and not have to rely on somebody playing 70 snaps. But uh, it's a position that we have some young players at that we think are talented, uh, but there's a lot of nuances to play in in the secondary at the college level and especially in our scheme. And, and even though we need to simplify it so those guys can play, it's still – and Coach Kleinerman and I have been together for a long time of understanding, are you ready to play in that moment? And – you have to prove that you're ready by how you perform at practice and making sure that you do know the reads and do know the calls and do know the communication. And, and if, if guys in our mind aren't comfortable in that in practice, they sure not, aren't going to be in the game. That's why we also have this open week and hopefully everybody will be healthy to be able to practice so that we can get some more guys that are younger players, some repetitions. 
Sully. Yeah, Coach, I didn't even touch on a couple of things already, but just <clears throat> in regards to Deuce, kind of going back to how he got to K-State, can you just talk a little bit about how he got on the radar? I know he had some amazing high school stats, but what did you guys see coming out of high school? Uh, the explosiveness, for sure. Um, the quick twitch, the ability for a, for a young man that's not of great size to break arm tackles. And uh, everybody worries about a smaller back. Can they be durable? Can they take those hits? Well, when you're not getting a square shot on guys because they're so quick, you're not taking some of those big hits. And then when he came, he came in the summer um, with his mother. Uh, and uh, I knew right then that he was a fit for what we wanted to do and what we wanted to build upon as far as character and integrity uh, within his mom. And then his dad being in the profession of, of, of coaching and, and now scouting in football, I know he'd been up, been around – what it's supposed to be like uh, at the highest level and, and how, you're, how you're supposed to be a professional and how you're supposed to act and how you're supposed to have great discipline and maturity. And we were jumping up and down when we were able to get his commitment because we know that he's a generational guy. And you say, well, what, what, that's a big term to say a generational guy. I think as much as what he can do off the field for our football team is what he can do on the field. Yeah, and just kind of following up on that, throughout the stadium, whenever he touched the ball on Saturday, there was a certain energy. You talked about that after the game. Did you expect the fans that were in the building kind of pick up on that right away as soon as he was touching the football? As soon as you saw him run one time, I think everybody did like, holy cow, uh, he's an electric player. And uh, uh, not only is he an electric player, but he's a, a better person, which is what I'm so excited about for his future. Cool. Thanks, Coach. You bet. John? Hey, Chris, after having a chance to watch the film of the game, do you come away feeling more or less encouraged, I guess, than when we last talked to you right after we played? Um, it's a good question. It's hard for me to answer. Uh, still, still disappointed, still frustrated in a number of things. But I, I have to kind of pause some because this is just one of those – years, John, that I just don't know. I mean, to think that you're going to be out as many guys potentially as you are because of, of COVID or to get guys back for two days and they have been out for 14 days and then they're going to practice for a couple of days in practice. None. Of, I'm not saying any of those things are excuses. They're not. We, we need to be better. It's just from a management standpoint from the head coach to the assistants, to the players, you don't know who you're practicing with on a daily basis. Offensively, you don't know who you're working with in the old line. You don't know who you're throwing the ball to. You don't know uh, if that corner or that safety, if that's the same guys. And so that's what we're dealt with. And I wish you'd say, well, we're going to get everybody back and everything's going to be fine. I don't know. I don't think anybody, any of us know. And so – once again, there's no coaching 101 for this. I've talked to some head coaches around the country that we're all dealing with the same stuff, and nobody has the exact answer of this is how you're supposed to do this. And so we're just going to keep learning on the fly and coach the guys that we have for that day really, really hard and really well so that when they have the chance to play, they're ready to play. Uh, and we may have that guy in two days later, get him ready, and then he's gone. That's something you just don't think about as part of college football, but it is right now in college football. And so every week we're going to work with the guys that we have and cross our fingers that we continue to do the right things um, with hygiene and masking and social distancing so that we can keep guys around. I ask about the, the trick plays to hurt you guys on Saturday. How fine of a line is it, especially defensively, about those two between being aggressive, making sure you're still aggressive on defense and? It goes back to discipline. It doesn't go back to aggression, non-aggression. It goes back to what are, my, what are my rules and principles of the defense? If I follow my rules and principles of the defense and I don't lose my eyes, I'll be fine. We, we have the answers for everything. We have the answer for the double pass. We have the answer for whatever the Philly special throwing it to the quarterback. If I follow my rules and principles within the framework of the defense, um, we have somebody assigned to everything. 
if I don't follow the rules and principles uh, on not only a trick play, but it could be a normal play, um, just a normal run, whatever, uh, you're not going to be successful. And those are the things that as a staff, we have to continue to try to keep preaching, 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 whether it's a young player that only has had that snap 10 times or an older player that's had that snap 190 times. If I follow my rules and principles, I'll be fine. Uh, Coach, I'm curious, you, you've said a number of times, you know, how, how there's nothing to compare to this season, right? I, I've tried to compare it in the pros when they had strikes in 82 in 87 and how coaches had to adjust one, the scab players that played in 87. And uh, there was a game where, where Bill Walsh ran the option, right? Against Bill Parcells. And there's a great NFL films where he's just like, shrugs his shoulders. They're looking across the field at each other. Like, what do you want me to do? Right. So my, I'm curious, you know, you mentioned all the people coming and going. Do you view this season as we have to do what we want to be doing two and three years from now that th this is in some ways you've got to sacrifice. Maybe you could make some adjustments for the short term to try to win right now. But the big picture is you want to play the way you want to play. And so you're going to continue to do what's going to be best for the team when everybody's back. Right. When quote unquote normal returns to, to build the philosophy and approach that you want versus maybe some kind of for lack of a better term, a trick or something that, that could be a shortcut to maybe getting you some success right away. Great question, Sren. And if I were in year eight, I'd say let's, re, let's try to throw some gimmicks in there. Let's try to fool some people. But we're in year two. And so we are going to follow our philosophy and rules and principles, even if that is playing at a position where we're down, if that's playing at somewhere where we're not as equipped as we are in other spots because this is an absolute marathon for me here and not a sprint. I'm not sprinting to say I have to do this so that I can go get another job or I can do this or I can help this. We as a staff are making sure that this is a marathon so that we as a staff are here for the long term. And I'm not a quick fix guy. That'd be different if I said, hey, let's go get 15 JCs because we don't know if we're going to lose guys. We're going to go get 15 D1 transfers. That's not my philosophy. That's not our philosophy, <clears throat> excuse me, our philosophy as a program and as a staff. So we've had this conversation uh, as, as a staff on, on Sunday. Um, do we get to the gimmicky? Do we do this? And we all collectively as a staff said, this is who we are, and this is who we have been at a previous institution, and we aren't going to change that. And so are we going to maybe take some lumps periodically this year? Um, we may have to because I don't want to say come spring of 21, all right, let's go back to what we wanted to try to do because now I think you've lost a ton of time. Hope that answers it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and then um, – you, this is now your second year, right, playing up in a, in a bigger league versus a lot of experience playing where, you know, you kind of have that, that opportunity to, to point to the big boy, the Big 12 team that was on your schedule. Uh, I'm curious, just now, now having played several of those games, I know you, I think it was Nichols last year, you had some games where, you know, you were the hunted, for lack of a better term. Uh, mm -hmm. Anything you've, you've taken on that, that you've noticed is, is different or maybe surprising about, you know, being the big dog when, when the smaller school comes into play that, that maybe you didn't? see from the other side? No, because I did see it from the other side. So I caution the guys all the time. Football is football. It's why Briley Moore played so well. Briley had a chip on his shoulder. He, he wanted to experience Big 12 football. Some guys just want to be on a Big 12 roster as opposed to playing big boy Big 12 football. And I'm a big believer, and you guys have heard me say this a thousand times, football is football. And it doesn't matter what school you're at, where you're from, if you're a, a five-star to a, to a no-star like Carson Wentz was, you have an opportunity to play and you get a chance to play this great game. If you don't have your A game, you're going to get beat. And we know that in the NFL. You guys see that in the NFL every Sunday. But it's no different in college football. And in, 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 in an era right now where you don't know who's going to be around for a game – one to game two because of the some of the issues we're dealing with with COVID, I think it really levels the playing field. 
in the fact of I wouldn't want to go into a game saying, oh, these guys are out nine of their starters due to COVID. So I think guys would relax and say, oh, well, this is probably going to be a cakewalk. You're going to get beat by the backups. It doesn't matter because if you have a chip on your shoulder and want to prove somebody, you're going to do that because there's so much parity in the game of football. And then just a, a kind of a housekeeping question. You mentioned that they had the game in advance, and I know this wasn't the schedule you set out to, and beggars can't be choosers, right? You nope. mentioned how thankful you were to get to play the game. But just, just, uh, just so thinking forward, would you ever schedule a game with a team that's played a game before you for your opener if it weren't a COVID time, or is that something you would – You, you would rather do? not. You would rather not, but – you know, it depends. Is it a 12 game year? You know, uh, then somebody can add a game that's, that's from a, a different league or, you know, I don't know, just like everybody else doesn't know in the, in the distant future, what's going to happen with week zero. You know, is that going to be a, be a week that a lot of people play and then you kind of stuck because sometimes those week zero games become, Hey, let's get a game going. And then you've already got your schedule and Oh shoot. The team you're playing in week one gets an opportunity to play in week zero for, for a money game. They're going to do it. So, Typically, no, you wouldn't want to. You'd want everybody to be in that first game. You bet. Thank you, Coach. You bet. Thanks, Ryan. Last one right here, uh, Blair. There we go. Hey, Coach, I, I just want to know to, to what extent um, spirit and confidence was shaken by Saturday's outcome, and if you had to spend some time just working on that the last few days. No, probably going back to all the things that we've been asked with other questions uh, of of spirit and things like that. No, if you're not ready to play, you're going to get beat. And not saying we weren't ready to play. I thought we had a good week of preparation. Uh, but in the same respect, uh, there's a lot of good football players across the country at, at every level. And so you, you need to play really well with whoever you have uh, or you are going to get beat. Um, but, um, you know, we've had a lot of conversations on the football team over the last 48 hours about what we all can do to be better. And, uh, and that's just not on the field. That's off the field. That's doing the, the little things right. That's um, making all of our meals, getting to our tutor sessions on time, um, being respectful in the academic center, being respectful to our athletic trainers. Uh, all the little things, in my mind, come back to bite you. And it's easy to talk about it after a loss. But all the little things that you don't do correctly from a discipline standpoint can come back to bite you. Um, and, they, and some of those things, not all, but some of those things did uh, on Saturday. So probably more of an awakening, not to a coaching staff. I think our coaching staff uh, knew that some of these things could happen. But to, to an older kid, a younger kid, that uh, we got to tighten our ship a little bit here. And um, that's the challenge to, to our guys. And uh, I'm excited because we have challenged those guys, and um, uh, I'm, I'm looking to, looking forward to seeing how how guys respond. Not just in a week; you don't tighten a ship in a week, but over the next three months, whether that's two games or nine games.